Good day and uh, welcome to the Phono Cave. Some uh, time back I did a uh, video on a, a gramophone from Africa and instead of returning it to factory specs I turned it into the tribe colors that it came with. I restored that instead of going to factory. And then I thought, you know, there were gramophones in... I mean, there were folk art things in the world that could also be used on gramophones. And one of those was the hobby of pasting cigar bands on pretty much everything that originated from Cuba and spread throughout the Caribbean as something to sell to the tourists. Well, I thought to myself, I need to find me a really, really bad quality portable gramophone and do something with cigar bands. Take that cigar band to a gramophone. And I did. And here it is. If we go a bit closer. Oh, stuck behind something. You can see the individual cigar bands. And if I take this thing off the tripod, you can take a look at the lid. Now, saying this thing was a piece of crap it was an understatement. It, the arm was attached with rubber bands with screws through it, which of course immediately came off the minute you touched them. So I replaced that with uh, thin laminated wood, three layers. And then big, <laughs> big industrial screws in there that screw directly into the horn. Then the horn was missing uh, its side, <coughs> so the horn was incomplete. I restored that, put a piece of cardboard in there, like there probably would have been a thin piece of plywood or cardboard. Uh, and then I could go on and make this a cigar band gramophone because as far as uh, collector's value go there was no collector's value with this thing and it still doesn't work very well because it's about uh, 20 rpm too fast now that can be fixed but it's a hell of a job to do that so that's a little job for a day when it's a bit cooler and I've got a bit more patience because with this heat you want things done yesterday. Well, let's go over what I did. You know, I pasted the motorboard to with with the cigar buns to about, you know, several centimeters under the plate. You know, don't go all the way through. You don't see it, so don't paste it. They would have done that in the tourist industry and I did it as well. Uh, I pasted the record plate, you know, the original felt was pretty scruffy and was tearing off so I thought you know I can re-glue that or I can take the rim of that record and make it look like this then I took an, uh, an old 19th century Chinese coin and glued it on the the needle uh, holder. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in on that. There we are. There. I hope that showed that. So, that's the cigar band uh, folk art gramophone that I made and that I basically wanted. 
and I think it looks fantastic. The, f the first idea I had was to do the whole thing inside and out. But the more I was working on it, I thought to myself, that would go to the state of being boring. Because it would be all the same all over. What I like about this is that you've got references of rest. You've got the black horn, the black background over there. Then the exterior is still dark. And it gives it more oomph than if I would have pasted all of it. And I still have enough cigar bands to paste 10 of these machines top to bottom inside out. So <laughs> there would have been no trouble there. And you know, this is a very <laughs> interesting thing to do because it's the first time that I took something existing and changed it to something else in the world of gramophones. Because the African one already had those colors that I later painted it. They had just worn over the span of 80 years. You know, a tribe had got hold of a 102 gramophone and they used materials they used on themselves to make the thing look prettier in their eyes. And I brought that back to a more newer state. This has never been a cigar band gramophone. I made this up, but this might have existed in the 1930s. Easily. It might have existed in the 1950s, you know, when a kid would have sold this thing uh, to a tourist. But, you know, this thing is a bit of a monstrosity. It, 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 like I said, it runs about 20 RPM fast. Uh, the original sound box that came with it was a rather good one. You know, one of those uh, exhibition clones. But I thought, you know, that really doesn't fit on, on this machine. It's more of a, uh, you know, like this. Bigger sound box. It has a small horn, and to have a small sound box on it, it would sound tiny. Well, to play a record on it, I need to play a record on it that doesn't sound immediately smurf on it. So, I've chosen a 27 centimeter Odeon. Because I know they run between 80, 85 RPM and 95 RPM. So, at least that's a little bit closer to what it's running now, which is about 100 RPM. Which is, well, that's 78, uh, 88, 98. So, it, it's, it's a bit closer than it would be. Well, let's see how that sounds. Okay, well, the break is perfect, by the way. Let's see what it sounds like. You go live over there somewhere with the sound box that it came with. 
let's put a another beautiful gamma needle in there which are so plentiful at the moment there go in the hole that's a tight fit people there we go let's put it somewhere where we left off Strange thing, it doesn't make very much difference in volume. Okay. That's experiment number two. Uh, what else do we have? That's the... Uh, kind of... That's a bit too tight. Doesn't want to fit. Did he? Now, maybe the Age of V clone. Ooh, that's uh, swivelly loose. Oh, whoops. That sound box is pretty much uh, aft. And, you know, it's one of those that is, uh, that is unopenable. I would start to think, well, what does it sound like with a 5B, you know. But, you know, it gives the, uh, the general idea. Where did I put the damn thing? Uh, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. Yeah, that's it. It gives a general idea of what it is and what it does. Uh, yeah, and that record sounded generally okay. At uh, about 80 plus RPM. <laughs> well, probably 85 plus RPM. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's okay. I think, you know, I could go on about it, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a thing of uh, weird beauty, and I like it, and I'll keep it at that. Until the next time, goodbye.